Welcome to Fellowship. We're glad that you're here this morning. Hopefully you had a great week in the Lord. And uh, I know we're all looking forward to a, a great week this next week. Uh, let me just uh, uh, add just a little bit to what Jeff said about the revival. Uh, we're going to feed everybody each night uh, at Monument Baptist on Wednesday night and Thursday night beginning at 5 o'clock. That doesn't mean you have to be there right at 5. I understand people work. And it's tough. It's an hour drive. Uh, they'll be feeding right up to 6 o'clock. And so if you can't be there at 5, but you might get there by 6, don't have to go by Burger King or McDonald's or wherever. Just come right on to the church. Uh, Monument Baptist Church is in the Redlands. Uh, if you'll take the 24 road exit off of I-70, go around a couple of traffic circles, just keep going to the south toward the Redlands, and uh, it's approximately uh, two, two and a half miles from the time you exit off of the uh, interstate. And you'll get to uh, 23 Road in Broadway, or you come to Broadway, I should say. Red light at Broadway, take a left, one mile down on the left-hand side at 23 Road is actually where Monument is. Book Cliff Baptist Church, much easier to find. Uh, that's on Friday night and Saturday, all day long on Saturday, beginning at 9 o'clock in the morning. Kenny's going to be leading our music uh, in, in the early part and also in the afternoon, so I uh, look forward to hearing your own praise team. Uh, we're going to have 15 preachers preach during this uh, uh, four-day period of time. That's a lot of sermons. Uh, if I had to preach them all, I couldn't make it. I couldn't do it all. You know, that's too much. And so I'm excited about have we have 15 very good speakers, and you'll hear a good sermon at each location. So don't just come for one or two. Plan on coming as much as possible. Uh, sign up back here. The, the meal sheets for each night. Wednesday is one for Wednesday, one for Thursday, one for Friday, and one for Saturday for lunch on Saturday. Uh, I promise you, if you make a sacrifice this week, to drive all the way over there and participate, you will receive a blessing for doing that. God will bless your heart. You'll hear some good biblical sermons, and he'll bless your heart for it, and he will stoke up the fires in your heart for revival. And that's what each of us need from time to time. You know, We need that in our hearts, do we not? Uh, also, I wanted to announce that uh, Kevin mentioned to me, He's going to be going on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, and if you want to carpool, that's a great way. A couple of families get together and carpool over there, save gas, take turns driving, one drive one night, one the next night. Uh, please make an effort to do this, and, and you'll be the one to receive the blessing for doing that, okay? Uh, I want to report to you also, I came through here early on Friday morning about 7.30, and uh, went up to Dinosaur, took the food that you collected, and uh, to the missionaries that are doing our work in the school system there in Dinosaur, they're providing actually the uh, lunch for the kids there, 19 kids that don't have, they, they study online, okay? There, there are no teachers there. The teachers are in Douglas County, and they study online with an online learning program. They have two facilitators, but no lunch. Big building, coal building, no lunch. Uh, monies that Colorado Baptists have given are providing food, and, and in addition to that, also provided some heating for some of the classroom. One of the class, they all study in one room, so we didn't have to heat a whole bunch of classroom. Uh, the school district closed about six years ago. They went to this online program, and Believe me, it's a great way for our missionaries to make contact with people in that community, all right? It's a great way to make contact. They already have. They've only been doing this about a month now, and they, the little kids love them. And what it's going to do, I believe, is be able to draw some families to Jesus, some families in that town that need the Lord through the ministry of these two missionaries all the way from... Uh, uh, Blue Springs, Mississippi, that have come to work with our kids there uh, in Dinosaur. Uh, Mike Johnson, some of you may know Mike uh, from Johnson Construction Company over here. Uh, Mike uh, donated a power generator, and we took it to that missionary family. They're living in a 36-foot trailer, 
and uh, it got 32 below zero about 10 days ago up there. And if the power goes out within a couple of hours, everything in that trailer will freeze. And so uh, this is a backup. But we thank Mike and we thank Fellowship of the Rockies for providing food. So see, this is what we do as Colorado Baptists. We team together and help uh, those in need to reach people for Jesus in certain ministries. And thank you for bringing food to participate in that as well. We're going to talk about holiness this morning. It, that is, uh, it's not the same thing that uh, my w mother used to do with my socks. When, as a kid, I did, I'd wear my socks outside sometimes and get holes in them, okay? Uh, that was a type of holiness, but the type we're talking about this morning reflects the character of God. And what God wants each of us to do is to reflect his character in this world. Now, holiness is not everything there is about God, but it's certainly one of his attributes. It's certainly one of his characteristics. And he desires that his children, that was the Jewish people, the Israelites in the Old Testament, but that's us as believers in Jesus Christ today, he desires that we reflect that into our community where we work, where we shop, where we live, uh, where we exist on a regular basis. Because it's through that characteristic that many people stand up and take notice of the life of a Christian person because that life of holiness is different than what we run into in the world, is it not? I mean, I don't see a lot of holiness out here in the world. <laughs> I, I just don't run into that. And, uh, and so it's the fact that we are surrendered to God. I used to use the word committed. I don't like that word anymore. I believe surrender is what God asks. He doesn't ask me to be committed. I can be committed at a very shallow level of commitment. He asks my total surrender to him. And when I'm totally surrendered to him, he is able to work his character through my life, through the presence of his spirit who indwells me, so that other people who need to see the holiness of God can see that through my life, and they can see it through yours as you do the same thing. We're going to talk about this this morning. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for Jesus Christ and for what he means to each of us as believers. And I thank you that, Lord, if there's someone here this morning that does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that they might come to know him this day. Thank you, Lord. Teach us more about you. Teach us your holiness this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. There's a Hebrew word <coughs> called uh, Gadesh that is <coughs> the actual word for holiness that's used in the Old Testament. And it really means separation or being set apart for God's use. Separation, <coughs> separation from the world. Separation from a life of sin. And set apart from the standpoint of being a vessel or a tool in God's hands that he can use to touch the lives of other people. And so that is a real definition of, of what the word means as it's used throughout Scripture. Uh, it's a general term that indicates a sanctity of life. Sanctity of life. Now, there are three stages of salvation. There's justification, when we realize Jesus died on the cross for our sins and we're saved. All right? Then the second one is sanctification. Sanctification begins in the life of the Christian person, should begin the moment they're saved. As they grow, and really it is a word of growth, it's a process word. Sanctification is a process whereby God, through the presence of his spirit that he gives us when we're justified, the spirit comes and indwells us, and he begins to perform a work in our lives that makes us look more and more like God. That's the work of the Spirit in your life and my life. Uh, if you've been a Christian 40 years, hopefully he's been in the process of sanctifying you for 40 years. If it's five years, then hopefully for five years or one year for one year. It is a process. It's not accomplished just like that. Justification happens just like that. You see, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. 
He provided for our salvation. The moment we confess our sins, the moment we put our faith and our trust in Him, the moment we repent and turn our lives over to Him and by faith receive that salvation experience, we're justified. It happens like that. But sanctification is a lifelong process, okay? And so sanctity is one of the things that God produces in the life of a transformed believer in Jesus Christ. We're going to talk about that through the scripture this morning. Uh, it's a separation for everything that's sinful, impure, and morally imperfect. And that's who God is. See, we get the biggest picture of holiness from God, do we not? The greatest picture we find, and we find it very early in the scripture, through even through the book of Revelation, all the way through God's word, this Holiness is a part of who God is, who he wants you and I to be as we live the Christian life and what he wants to do in the lives of other people. So first of all, let's look at holiness, the holiness of God. Hopefully you have a copy of our sermon this morning. I'm not going to do this every Sunday uh, to sit down and write this out, but I've used about 25 scriptures this morning, and I know it's hard. I know you probably know exactly where every one of those scriptures is are found in God's Word, but sometimes when we go looking in Habakkuk and some of those other places, uh, we have to look in the table of contents, and that's okay. If you don't want to use this, then use your Bible, whatever you want to. This scripture is uh, typed. I did it myself. I, this is, uh, I did not steal the sermon, okay? This is uh, a sermon that God has given me, and so any typographical areas here, you can blame me for them. I caught one this morning, went back and reprinted part of it. Uh, before I rent off the copies. But we're going to follow and see what God's Word says about holiness because, you see, it's not important what some preacher says about holiness. 